Drow Ranger was picked only 7 times out of 200 games in the Bally Major and currently has a 48% win rate on Pro Tracker. However, Yotoro is rocking a 70% win rate on her, which is absurd considering the fact that her shard was changed and her farming capability was nerfed. Let's see how Yotoro is able to make her work. Starting with his early item build, Yotoro always has the same item build in every game, which is a magic wand and 3 branches. He has been experimenting with different early builds but has stuck with this one for the last 7 games he has played. This item build allows him to rush his power treads and then work his way to a hand of Midas. Usually, Draw Ranger players buy smaller items like Wraith Band, Ring of Basilius or Falcon Blade. Yatoro's build includes a Hand of Midas, which might seem sus, but hear me out. This build is actually legit and I'll explain why throughout the video. Overall, I like the early build because you can rush your treads without the need to buy any smaller items, which makes your Midas timing immaculate. The build itself provides you with 7 stats and the ability to sustain in the lane with the active of the magic stick. He usually ships out tangos for himself after the bounty runes. What I've noticed from his games is that he always has a really good Midas timing, usually between 8 to 11 minutes into the game. This can only be possible if he wins his lane convincingly. Drow has been known to be a strong laner because of her frost arrows. Frost arrows allow her to hit foes without drawing aggro, and since frost arrows slow the enemy as well, it's a good harassing tool. Additionally, the physical damage of the frost arrows can be used to secure last hits easily. With the way the meta is, people pick lane dominating supports like CM, Undying, Venomancer, etc. If you've noticed, most of these heroes have either a stun or a slow and Blurred Grenade is a no-brainer in every lane. Combine that with Draw Ranger's Frost Arrows, it is fairly easy to bully out the enemy offlaner. Thus, Draw Ranger wins most of her lanes. Other than that, Draw Ranger's ult and multi-shot are good against Vanguard buying offlaner since they do so much damage, the reduction does not matter. Lastly, Draw Ranger's weakness is heroes being able to jump her, for which she also has a solution. Her second spell, Gust, knocks the enemy back which allows her to avoid risky situations and turn them around. Yatoro does not prefer to fight for bounty runes. He usually hangs around them but only commits to fight for them if his teammates tank for him. As Drow Ranger is a very squishy hero and if slowed with enemy spells and blood grenades, it's very easy for her to die. In the laning phase, his approach is passive-aggressive. He assesses the situation of the lane and then decides how he wants to play. If he has a good position in the lane, he tends to harass the enemy with his frost arrows every chance he gets. He keeps harassing the enemy with his frost arrows and when a creep is in last hit range, he tends to secure it with his frost arrows. Yatoro almost always buys Band of Elwen skin as his first tread component rather than boots or gloves, as it gives him plus 6 damage and plus 6 attack speed, which makes it easier to secure last hits. The only time he prefers boots of speed is against heroes that he needs movement speed against, heroes with slows like Beastmaster for example. Drow's playstyle does not involve bringing the enemy hero down from 100 to 0 HP. It's mainly chipping down the enemy slowly and then killing them with the help of your lane partner. When Yatoro is in a bad position, he tends to play defensively. Usually bad position means that the enemy has a creep advantage, which they can use to dive the Drow Ranger in the early levels. There's only one thing you can do to avoid this, which is to control the creep equilibrium and avoid being double waved to the best of your ability. In the laning phase, he prioritizes having 2 points in his frost arrows at level 3 so that he can harass the enemy even more. Sometimes, he will go as far as taking 3 points in it at level 5 rather than going for 2 or 3 points in his multi shot. Essentially, you don't want to be booted out of the lane as a draw ranger, as she isn't a great early jungle farmer and requires levels to excel. If he feels like he doesn't need another point in frost arrows to be able to stay in lane, he tends to take the second point in multi shot at level 5 to accelerate his form. At level 4, he usually holds the skill point to see whether there will be a situation where he would need his gust. In most cases, he takes gust at level 4 over another point in his multi shot to ensure that he has a way to save himself in the lane. At level 6, he takes his ult followed by maxing his multi shot. Multi shot is Drow's farming tool. After Yatoru gets his ult on Drow and has power treads, he tends to push in the lane rather than holding it, which allows him to farm the side camps every minute. This in return lets him have insane amounts of farm. He averages around 5k net worth at 10 minutes in every game, even in the games where he doesn't have that many kills in the laning phase. This is only possible due to the combination of his laning mechanics and the ability to push in the wave and consistently farming the side camps in the lane. 
Yatoro's early game item build is always the same. He rushes trails and then goes for the Hand of Midas. Now you guys might be thinking, what the fuck? Hand of Midas? Every game? Yes, every game. Midas is purely a farming item but hear me out. Draw Ranger's kit is essentially designed to fight. All of her spells allow her to fight. The problem with Draw Ranger in this patch was that the capability of farming she had with her shard in the previous patch is no longer there. So she needs an alternative. Midas provides you with the gold you need to get to your Dragonlance plus Aghanim's timing. And the most important thing about Midas is the EXP you get. Drow loves having levels, and with levels, she farms faster and fights better. How does Drow do damage in fights? With her right clicks. What does Midas provide Drow with that can help her right click better? The additional attack speed that you get. I tried the build myself and in my opinion, it is not a grief and this hero can farm amazingly fast. Other than that, he also buys a casual windlace for the movement speed and raindrops for the mana region after he gets the Midas. Every video takes a lot of effort and I want to keep helping you guys by making quality content. If you are enjoying the video, please make sure to like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe. Now back to the guide. Drow Ranger has a fighting kit. Even though Yatoro buys Midas as his first big item, he still tries to join the fights. He plays at the back of his allies and contributes with his right clicks and multi-shot. He mainly saves Gus for mobile heroes that rely on their abilities, like Storm Spirit and helps his team kill them. Drow Ranger typically does not need a farming item like a Battle Fury or a Maelstrom because she has a multi-shot to clear camps and waves easily. Yator tends to farm based on what is safer for him. Drow Ranger is a hero that has no mobility or escape mechanism, so showing up on lanes with her is severely punishable. With that being said, Yatoro tries to farm as safely as he can without showing on the map. If that is the triangle, then he will farm in the triangle. If that is his jungle, he will farm in his jungle. It all mainly depends upon what is safer and easier to farm. His triangle farming pattern is quite simple. Every minute he farms a large camp, the ancient camp, and then looks for a wave to push. This allows him to farm around 700 gold per minute. The main thing is that he prioritizes pushing waves as much as he can with his multi-shot. If there's one thing to learn as a carry, that is prioritizing farming lane creeps because not only does it give you more gold than neutral camps, it progresses the game. After Treads and Midas, Yatoro goes for Dragonlance into Aghanim Scepter. Draw excels if you position her well. Dragonlance makes it easy to position her because of the additional attack range that you get. Other than that, Dragonlance can be disassembled and the Blade of Alacrity can be used to get your Aghanims quicker. Aghanims Scepter is draws damage and helps her scale throughout the game with the insane farming capability it provides, thanks to the Hypothermia AoE burst damage on the Frost Arrows. Other than that, it gives you 375 HP and 375 mana, which a squishy mana lacking hero like Draw Ranger really benefits from. Yatoro prefers buying the Staff of the Wizardry first out of his Aghanim's components because Drow Ranger has a small mana pool and relies on her spells to be able to farm. The extra mana pool from the Staff helps with the mana problem. Lastly, he disassembles Dragonlance into Aghanim's but goes back for the Dragonlance after completing his Ags. For his skill build, Yatoro prioritizes maxing his multi-shot after 2 or 3 points in his Frost Arrows, followed by maxing Frost Arrows and then Gust. Multi-shot is draws damage plus farming tool, so maxing that first makes a lot of sense. Prioritizing a few points in the Frost Arrows over the multi-shot in the laning phase is crucial as it helps you win your lane. In terms of his talents, he takes the Frost Arrow damage talent at level 10 as it helps with farming and damage whereas the Gust self movement speed is not that useful in comparison. At level 15, he takes minus 8 seconds multi-shot talent because it allows him to clear raves faster and as a result, farm faster. The Gust talent is quite literally useless. As for his level 20 talent, he takes the multi-shot damage because it scales throughout the game. The silence cooldown offers nothing in comparison. Lastly, for the level 25 talent, he can go for either depending upon the situation. If he's in a position where he will be allowed to right click a lot, then he prefers a chance increase. If he wants to play from a distance or won't be able to right click much, he prefers the multi-shot waves talent. Multi-shot waves talent is especially good against Lark because you can do damage through his cloud. 
In terms of fighting, Yatoro tends to join almost every fight as long as he has a Dragonlance to work with. Drow Ranger is a hero that does not require items to be able to have an impact in fights. As long as Yatoro can play on the back of his allies, he feels safe to join fights and contribute. He uses Gust to protect his teammates and then multi-shot to dish out damage. The main thing to worry about when it comes to joining fights is whether you will be able to fight off the back of your allies. If you don't think that is possible, then it's best to avoid fights. Mainly, if you have melee initiators in your team, then it's fairly easy to fight. One notable thing is that he never mindlessly runs around for fights, he always keeps up with his farm. Even when he's pressuring the enemy continuously, he still has decent amounts of farm. After getting his Axe and Dragonlance, Yatoro chooses between a bunch of options in terms of itemization. He chooses between Hurricane Pike, Manta, Silver Edge, Lincolns, BKB or Blink Dagger. Drow Ranger has enough damage with just her kit and agonims. She usually needs to itemize for survivability. Yatoro opts for the Hurricane Pike if he needs to displace himself from a bad situation. For example, against heroes like Slark, Ursa, Clockwork or Tusker, the Hurricane Pike is good. Similarly, if he's against Roots, Slows or Silences, he tends to go for Manta for the Dispel. If he does not need items for survivability, he tends to go for Silver Edge to be able to dish out raw damage and also be able to catch foes alone. He opts for Lincolns if he needs to save himself from targeted spells such as Doom, Roar, Rupture, etc. As long as Draw is able to position herself, she will own in fights. Spells such as Rupture don't allow her to do that, so having Lincolns is crucial. He opts for BKB if there are jumps with stuns and a lot of magical damage. Draw is very squishy and if the enemy can lock you down with magical burst, you won't have a chance. In terms of overall itemization on draw, all of these items can be bought in the same game. It depends upon what you need for certain situation. In a lot of games, you'll need both Pike and Manta. Ideally, when you itemize, you need to think about what item will keep your hero alive and be able to attack the enemy and then choose accordingly. Drow Ranger relies heavily on positioning. In order to survive fights and dish out damage, Drow needs to have the perfect positioning. In team fights, Yatoro does not show first. He waits for his teammates to either start a skirmish or for the enemy to go on them. Once the fight is started and he is not the center of attention, he shows up and dishes out damage. He uses Pike to either close out the distance between the escaping foes or to escape himself. In terms of using his items, he doesn't use Manta for damage, but rather for situations where he will need the dispel. After Yatoro gets to the point where he's strong enough to breach high ground, he waits for the perfect opportunity. He avoids going high ground if the members of the enemy team are alive. Usually, you will only see him going high ground when the members of enemy team are either dead or he has ages. It is very easy to throw as a draw ranger and the risk is too big, so he prefers to keep it risk free. If you are interested in private coaching, you can join my discord linked in the description. Please make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this. Do let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or video suggestions. Otherwise, have a nice day and good luck with your games.